Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you, God, for being with us on this day. God, we thank you for allowing us the opportunity to uh, come uh, be at your house, God, uh, for our Sunday school and to be able to uh, speak uh, to one another, um, Lord, about your word. Today's uh, focus thought is uh, coming from uh, Revelations 1, 17 through 18, and it reads, The revelation of Jesus Christ should produce awe and wonder in us. Revelation 1, 17 through 18, And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead and he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not, I am the first and the last. I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and of death. Um, so we're talking about uh, about how uh, the 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 writer right has tied uh, together the the truth about the gospel right that God and Jesus is one in the same uh, that God and Jesus are one in the same. Um, I want to read these uh, the glimpses of the Creator because uh, it really really touched me. According to statistics in 2018, 6.53 million people visited the Grand Canyon, 4 million people visited Yosemite National Park, and 4.12 million people visited Yellowstone National Park. Every year, millions of people are drawn from their homes, cities, and countries to experience nature's beauty. As guests stand in awe of creation's beauty, the mountains, the oceans, the canyons, the trees, the waterfalls, and the animals seem to quiet the noise and stress that permeates so much of our life. When people comment on experiences such as these, they tend to describe their feelings as cares falling away. Clarity of mind, spiritual awareness, coming home, the existence of the creator, restoration of peace and quiet, finding purpose, inspiration restored, and creative reignited. If glimpses of the creator, if glimpses of, of the creator and what we call nature have such an impact on humanity, how much more does the revelation of the creator as Jesus Christ impact every person the revelation of the god of all creation coming to the earth nailing our sins to the cross and filling us with the holy spirit as a promise of new life and him should inspire an awe that is incomprehensible this awe brings an awakening and serves as a hint to all humanity that there is more, there is hope, and there is a creator. Such a powerful, such a powerful read uh, this lesson was because, you know, in fact, what, what it was about was about the fact that God and Jesus are one in the same, that the blood that was slain for the lamb, right, typically used to wash away the sins in the Old Testament, we were given the ultimate lamb, right, in Jesus Christ. Um, and so John is uh, using a technique um, in his writing that ties together all these separate phrases where he's going back and stating the phrases that are mirroring the phrases that come out of the Old Testament to tie together the story about what Jesus was. Um, and so John's revelation is that, uh, is that the revelation of, of Jesus Christ. John's revelation is the revelation of Jesus Christ. Jesus is the center and the focus of John's message to the church. 
it's important to remember that even though the book of Revelation was written in Greek, it's still text written by an author who had a, a Hebrew background, right? And a way of thinking. Thus, interpreting Revelation through the tool of circumlocation, that one's a hard one, Cir circumlo circumlocation, right, becomes necessary when trying to properly understand John's message. Revelation is the final act in the narrative of Jesus Christ. The name of Jesus literally translates Yahweh saves. In the book of Revelation, Jesus lives up to the scale and magnitude of his name in every way. Revelation is the text that tells the church of the time when Jesus saves humanity and the world. And so and so we we have nothing to fear. We don't have anything to be uh, worried about because the 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 beauty is is that Jesus saves from the uttermost to the guttermost. That the same God of yesterday is the same God of today. That God went down and died and then he rose up with all power in his hand with control over death. And us taking on his name, right? Right. When you get married. Right. You ought to be able to have some benefits uh, from the last name that you take. Right. You ought to be able to uh, call up and talk about the bills. Amen. You ought to be able uh, to go in and and get something in that person's name. Amen. You ought to be able to take on the the uh, the moniker, the the respect, the reputation of what uh, that last name uh, it means. Right. Right. My grandfather used to say that a good name will carry you further the money right and uh and so and so you know when we take on the name of jesus there are some things that come associated with the name right uh salvation comes associated with the name amen and so what we have to realize what we have to realize is also that there is an expectation for us right right because the expectation is is how are you carrying the name of Christ. How are you carrying the name of Christ? How are you carrying the name of Christ? Um, there was a, a story in there about about uh, the 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 witch in the wardrobe and how Aslan, uh, the lion, if you've ever seen the movie, uh, was related to uh, who God was, right? And that he was this uh, this this lion with such a comforting voice, and that whenever he was around, all of the all of the the enemies would fear, right? And we see that same. We see that same thing with God throughout the Bible, that when God showed up, he was shutting stuff down, right? Well, you know, it's the same relationship when, when Jesus shows up and, you know, and the uh, demons are fleeing out into the pigs and running off the side of the cliff. It's the same thing when he's casting down uh, the, 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 uh, the, the demons, right, and casting out spirits right throughout the Bible, and so John does a beautiful eloquation of of who Jesus is, and then connecting those through uh, that 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 term, that writing term, uh, which basically means that you're going back and you're connecting the ties of the facts that happened before with the facts that happen in the present, right? To symbolize and to uh, overall to to tie those two things together, right? A plus B equals C. So therefore, when you uh, take out B, then A equals C. Right, right, right. We, you, you. I, I know. I, I went over y'all's head. I'm sorry. Y'all thought y'all thought it was an algebra class, but, but essentially, what we're saying is, is that you have the power of God, of the Creator, resting in you. You have the power of God, the creator, resting in you when you take on Jesus's name, when you go down in Jesus's name and come up a new being in Christ, you are imbued with power. You have 
the ability to speak life into a situation. Yeah, the ability to speak death over a situation as well. And so we have to be careful about the things that we are associating ourselves with. We have to be able to, A, protect our spirit, but we also have to be able to exercise the power of the Holy Spirit, right? We have to know, and we have to know it here. We have to know it in our soul that the power that we have is not something to play with. It's not something to play with, right? we have to be able to understand that there is a responsibility a responsibility in how we live and what we portray and what we do as christians right right i would encourage you to go back um read over this lesson right read over revelations right get a deeper understanding of of who you are in Christ, right? And whose you are in Christ, right? Because the thing is, is that we have to keep that in mind that we just can't be out here all willy-nilly doing whatever we think that we want to do because now, now it's just not us, right? When mothers uh, become pregnant, right? They just can't eat what they want, right? They have to eat in the 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 idea of, okay, how is this going to affect the baby? You know, oh, you used to love those hot Cheetos. Oh, but you can't eat them no more. Not, not At least not for nine months, right? Right? And it's because you are impregnated with that power at that time. And there's going to be a breakthrough. There's going to be a birthing of something in your life, right? Right? And so, and so we have to feed the Holy Spirit and our relationship with Jesus Christ just the same way. Amen? Amen? We have to be able to understand that there is some nutritional aspects to our relationship with God. Amen? Amen? You have to be able to be able to go to the throne of God in prayer, right? You need to be praying. You need to be praying over your situation. You need to be praying over your relationships. You need to be praying over your job. You need to be praying over your manager. You need to be praying over your finances. You need to be praying over yourself. Hallelujah. Right? Right? Uh, you, you have to, you have to not forsake the assembling of Come on now. Now, now, listen, I know, I know we all digital, right? So we, we're not seeing each other face to face, but you got to be in a place where you can get some healing. Amen. You got to be in a place where you can come together with some like-minded folks in Christ. Amen. Right? Right? Amen. Amen. You got to be reading your word. Amen. You got to be digesting that word. You got to be in the word. Amen. Because how else are you going to have the protection when the time comes to cast that thing down? How else are you going to be able to stand in confidence if you don't know the power of my God? Come on now. Somebody got to get with me. But, but we have to be doing some things, right? We have to be doing some things to empower ourselves and to continue to strengthen ourselves, right? Because not only because of the expectation, but because of the fact that God is within you, right? Right? And, and the most important thing, we have to be protecting ourselves. We have to be protecting ourselves. You should, you should cover your spirit. Amen. You should care for your spirit. Amen. You should protect your spirit. Amen. Just like it was a baby. Because you know that you wouldn't have, you know, the baby around somebody who's smoking. Amen. You know you wouldn't have the baby out here just walking in the middle of the street. Amen. You're going to have you a stroller. You're going to be right there. The baby going to be buckled down with the safety guard on, right? He's going to have a neck pillow and everything and be resting in the lead. Amen. Now, now listen. Now, listen. That's the same type of care and candor that you have to have for your Holy Spirit. Amen. You have to be able to care care for that thing, to sup with yourself and to sup with God, amen, the Father, right, and Jesus Christ, amen, are all one and the same. So so regardless of what name you use, right, right, you want to use the name of Jesus Christ, right, you definitely want to use the name of Jesus Christ, but who are you talking to? You're talking about one and the same. You're talking about Jesus Christ, right, our God, our Savior, our Father, right, right. It ain't nothing but a difference in role. That's it. That's it. He just, he just changed the role. Amen. He's a father, right, right. He's a son. Amen. Amen. Right. It's the same relationship. 
Amen. And he's the Holy Spirit there to lead and guide us in all truth. Amen. So um, so I would encourage you to go back and read the uh, read the lesson. Uh, it was definitely uh, very, very much so uh, such a such a blessing to my soul. And, and I would encourage you. This is even this is this is just from that, that passage that I read to get out. And to open your eyes, right, right? You have to close them first, right? So you just need to get out and you need to go outside. You need to go to a beautiful place. Just close your eyes, inhale, and then open your eyes back up and see the majesty of what God has made before you. The majesty of what God has put before you, right? Right, he has empowered us. He he has shown us that he cares. He has shown us a life, right, through this pandemic that we could still be healthy, that we're still here, that we're still having the opportunity to praise his name, to bring honor and majesty to his name. Amen. And so we have to be able to take advantage of what he's given us because somebody didn't wake up this morning. Somebody didn't have the mobility of their limbs. Somebody was on, uh, you, you know, a, a ventilator and they, they didn't have auditory uh, abilities where they could speak. Amen. And so and so we want to be we want to be able to 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 take advantage of the opportunity that God has placed before us. Amen. I want I want you to be encouraged. I want you to to know that God loves you. I want you to continue to be safe and to be healthy and to join us back here again uh, next uh, Sunday at 9.30 a.m. And I, I'd love to see you. I'd love to see you uh, as we move forward towards a healthier place right here uh, at, at, uh, at, uh, at Better Way Apostolic Church. Amen. I love to I love to see you here. Amen. Uh, we're here every Sunday morning at 11 a.m. You know, mass and maintaining distance. But uh, but I hope you enjoyed it and uh, and I enjoy speaking with you and I'll see you again. OK, bye for now.